My name is Ilaf Diaz, and I'm the Executive Director of Litter of Light. And with me is Ricky Macolor, who will be helping us assemble an evening nightlight, which will be assembled onto the already existing Litter of Light on the roofs of communities around the world. So uh, in a few simple steps, we'll be able to teach you how to be able to use available parts and how to repair uh, the litter of night, light night. So we have here uh, the standard bottle, um, and then we already attached the enhancement to the bottle, which is the uh, solar night light. So it's supposedly uh, going to uh, light up at night, but during the morning, what's going to happen is uh, it's going to automatically turn off. Right, so let's now start with uh, the materials required to be able to build uh, the solar night light or the upgrade. We have here most of the things that we need to be able to assemble uh, the solar night light. We need to have the uh, solar panel, uh, copper board. The size of the copper board is um, one inch by three inches. We have here a, um, a two watt eight point two. Uh, ohm resistor. We have 10k, uh, 1k, or two one pieces of 1k are 1 kilo ohm resistors. We have a uh, uh, barrier uh, 1 and 5819 uh, diode. We have the IRF 520 MOSFET. We have the uh, S9014 uh, N type transistor. We have the uh, HD or high powered 1 watt LED. Uh, 3.7 volts. We have here the 3.6 uh, 22,000 or 22,200 milliamp um, battery. We have the slide three pin sliding switch, fuse, some wires, and the uh, PVC pipe and in its coupling. And of course, for the protection of the circuit or the light, when we install it in the bottle, we have to have a uh, one half inch. Um, clear uh, uh, tube. All right, so uh, the first step, uh, usually what we want to do is we want to start with parts that are not so sensitive. So uh, we could probably go or start with our um, resistors. So it's up to you how you're going to um, start uh, assembling the circuit. But I prefer that we start with the components that are not uh, too sensitive to temperature like this particular resistor. So, uh, since this resistor is too big, or the its uh, uh, pins or legs are too uh, long for the board, what you want to do is kind of measure um, its position on the board, which is going to be placed here. Um, and then you want to cut the extra uh, leads off. So we can use uh, wire cutters or wire strippers but we want to show everyone that how simple it is. We can actually use an ordinary pair of scissors. So there. So we have now uh, the pins uh, or the legs of the resistor short enough. So you have to do this with the other um, components as well. So we're, not gonna, we're now going to solder or solder the um, the uh, resistor in. All right, so this is since this method of soldering is not the standard way, uh, which may be considered um, incorrect by some, but we want to make it simple for the communities that do not have enough uh, materials to be able to do it on their own with, their, with basic materials as well. So we're going to solder it on the copper board, provided that you've already etched or uh, cut the lines on the board using a cutter. Okay, so we're just going to put some lead there. All right. So make sure it does not uh, go over uh, the lines. Okay, so uh, we're able to solder one side in. We're, gonna now, we're now going to solder the other uh, leg of the resistor in. Okay. All right. So as you can see, we've already managed to solder uh, one resistor in. So we have to do uh, that particular step for all the other resistors based on the schematic that is already provided um, along with this video.
Um, so now we've uh, pretty much soldered uh, the resistors in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to solder the uh, transistors and the diodes uh, onto the board uh, to complete uh, the circuit that leaves us with uh, the switches and the batteries. So to solder uh, transistors in, you usually need some pliers or long nose to bend the legs a little bit. As you can see, their legs are uh, closely uh, distanced together. What you want to do is you want to uh, put a space so that the pins um, will go on their separate ways. So what we usually do if we do have a long nose uh, is we bend um, the legs a little bit and then distance them away using some pliers or in this case since we don't have any uh, use our hands to bend the resistors a little bit or the, the legs of the transistor or the big transistor a little bit okay so that they look like uh, they're positioned uh, like a fork there be careful though um, if you do this because you might um, completely break the connection of the pin onto the transistor itself so you have to do it with care um, while bending the legs. So if you think it's already sufficient or the dis distancing is already sufficient, you can now try to see uh, or approximate or test um, visually whether it will touch or not. If not, just make a few minor adjustments. Okay. So here, we can see now that we can probably solder it in already onto the board uh, without shorting uh, the legs of the transistor. Okay, so uh, we already soldered the, um, the big transistor in, or the MOSFET. Um, make sure that when you're soldering the uh, IC, or integrated chip components, for the transistors, make sure you don't heat it too much, because they're heat sensitive, especially the MOSFET, that if you over, uh, or you go over the temperature limit of the transistor, it might also break uh, the components inside. Similarly, uh, we have to install the small transistor onto the board as well. So this one, we're going to do the same thing as we did with the big transistor, um, bending its legs so that it will be able to fit onto the etched board. Okay, again, if uh, you have some long nose or pliers, um, you may be able to do this with ease. But we want to show um, the communities that with basic tools, they'll be able to uh, do it um, on their own. All right. Okay. Sometimes the legs are also too long that uh, it might cause some problems. So you might want to cut it a little bit shorter. Again, you might also want to use, um, if you have enough tools, you might want to use um, standard wire cutters. All right, so let's try, try to see if um, that fits. Yep, okay, so as you can see, the legs already properly separated that uh, they're distance enough. Okay. Alright, so we've already soldered that particular transistor in. Um, it helps if you have like uh, multi-testers or voltmeters so that you'll be able to check if there were any shorted um, 
sides on the board. So uh, you might want to test for short circuits as well as you go along the way if you do have a voltmeter with you. Okay, and the next part, uh, probably one of the most tricky would be the transistor or the uh, diode or the rectifier diode in the battery. So we'll just cut uh, the legs a little bit, bend it so that we'll be able to solder it in. Okay. All right, so we've managed to solder that in. We're now going to move to the battery. Um, again, you might want to use a voltmeter to check the polarity of the battery. Uh, but I already checked this one. This is this one is the negative end, and this one is the uh, positive end of the battery. So um, we'll now go in ahead and uh, put that in the board. Okay. So this is this is quite tricky to install because um, first and foremost, it has to be kept in place, and at the same time, the battery is round. So uh, that's going to be uh, a challenge, but you can be creative in how you'll be able to keep that in place. Like this one, I just put it on uh, or beside the scissors. Okay, so we're gonna now we're gonna solder that in. Okay. All right. So that went well. So on to the next uh, leg. Right. So to check if uh, everything is uh, properly connected, you might want to wiggle it a bit and then check if they're uh, properly connected or not. So this pretty much uh, completes uh, the basic circuit, uh, which leaves us with this switch onto this side. And after that, the circuit uh, for the, uh, lit the, the night light is already completed. So we're just going to put the switch and then the wires and then we're going to put everything together in the uh, PVC pipe, the tubes, and the, the high-powered lid as well. Okay, so that's pretty much it. You have to short the, the two pins and then leave the other pin um, on the other side of that particular edge, All right? So it might not be perfect in terms of soldering, but that's how it's supposed to go, okay? So uh, let's just uh, fix it a little bit. Okay. I'm just going to make sure it doesn't move. All right, so after it's done, uh, this is pretty much it. You have to connect the wires onto the end. So let me just show you how it's going to look like after uh, we've connected the uh, switches and the wires already.
All right, so this is how it's supposed to look um, after you've connected. So what I did here is pretty much everything's quite recycled. So the wires I've connected, uh, the solid wires indicate the positive terminal. The negative wires are, are uh, connected via the stripes. Um, and this one goes to the, the light, and this one goes to the solar panel or the terminals of the solar panel. Okay, so that's how it looks like. So if you turn on the switch, the light is supposed to come on. And if there's sufficient light coming on to the solar panel, it's supposed to automatically turn off. All right, so let's just go to the last part, uh, which is to how to connect this particular light. So this one is the uh, HD LED or the high-powered LED. Um, it does not have a heat sink, so it warms up really fast. So the workaround that we did is we have a fuse. What we're going to do is we're going to put some lead there and then attach it onto the end of uh, the, uh, the HD LED. So this part is quite tricky. So what I suggest is you get the uh, wires or the connecting wires and connect it onto the ends of or the terminals of the light first before connecting it or putting the improvised heat sink. So we're just going to strip off part of this particular wire. Right. Okay. Usually, the LED uh, will have positive and negative terminals. The negative terminal has a hole on its side. Or you can just uh, look closely if you have like magnifying glass or magnifying glasses. You can actually see that there's an indicator that this one is negative. This one is the positive terminal. All right. So we're going to first put uh, some LED onto the ends or to the pins of the lead okay again not uh, too long because if you do that you'll warm up or heat the uh, lead too much it might not work anymore okay that went well uh, next leg All right, so we've already managed to solder the uh, pins or the uh, wires in. Now, since you've already done that, it's easier to mount the uh, fuse onto the uh, lead because it's quite stable already. But as for this fuse, it's going to be quite difficult to put some lead in because uh, the base is not uh, perfect. We're just gonna improvise its stand. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> We're also gonna put some onto the um, lead. Again, not too long because if you. Uh, heat it too much, it might destroy the lead. Right. <laughs> okay, so at this point, the difficult part is putting these two together via the lead you've put in already. Okay, you might want to use pliers uh, because it might get too hot uh, uh, to handle. So we're just going to heat it up a little bit. Okay, and then connect it. All right. Okay, wait for a couple of seconds. Okay, so we've already now attached an improvised heatsink onto the lead. 
in this particular um, part of the fuse, you might want to cover it with some electrical tape, like the one that we did here, so that uh, the positive and negative terminals of the wires that we just put in will not short out. Okay, and this particular end goes to the uh, this particular side of the board near the switch. Okay, the longer your wire, the better it will be because you'll be able to uh, uh, put it in the the bottle or this one. Okay, so the longer the wire the farther it will be towards the end, which is what we actually want. We want the light to be somewhere around near the bottom. Okay. All right. So after that, uh, you're going to insert the light onto the tube, seal it. Uh, after sealing it, you just put it in the um, PVC pipe. You have to, uh, after wiring it in, you're just going to put it in here. The switch is supposed to go to the flat end. So we're going to put it that in there, right? And the light is supposed to go out here on this particular side. And the solar panel is uh, with the positive and negative terminals are supposed to go on this particular end. Okay, so this one though, uh, you don't directly connect it inside. You have to have like a bottle cap depending on the bottle or the plastic bottle you're going to use. For this one, uh, like this one, for instance. So we're just going to take that out so you can see. OK, we used a bottle cap here before attaching it to the uh, bottle. OK, oops. <coughs> so this one, uh, we used a, a bottle cap so that you'll be able to easily install it onto the uh, standard uh, light bottle. So there. So the reason why uh, we didn't really include it here is because it depends on what type of cap you want to use or what type of bottle you want to use for this particular method. OK, so we're just going to put it in there. As, as you can see, it's easier to install. Just twist it like you're just going to close to standard uh, bottle cap. And that's actually how it works.